everyone. It's your local web witch coming out of the tech fog for a live show on log analysis and network traffic out analysis. As our guest today, we have Tristan, Jacob, and the lovely Crypto Kate. Um, in case you are new to this platform or just joining us, uh, the way this works is we are here to talk about a very specific topic for the first like, hey, 20 or 30 minutes, and then we're going to be taking your questions throughout the show. So there are two ways to do that. Either you can put them in the chat, but we don't recommend that. There is a little bar at the bottom that says, ask a question. If you put a question in there, we'll be able to clip the very specific place in this recording where that question is answered. So you can go back and reference it if necessary. We also have a couple of polls going on. One specifically asking how you feel about log analysis. We have some very, uh, <laughs> we have some very good answers so far. Uh, solidly between throwing and swearing at the laptop and hugging the laptop. So some of you obviously do like log analysis. Um, Beyond that, there's a little green button at the bottom that is uh, directs you to Kate's blog, which should direct you to the blogs for this week. Um, other than that, I'm going to turn it over to our wonderful guests to talk about log analysis and network traffic analysis. And I believe we are starting with log analysis. Tristan? Okay. Um, so to start with the uh, log analysis, um, I'm going to start out with uh, what what tools I like to use. Um, it used to be that I was uh, very sold on shell commands. So, um, I would frequently use things like awk, grab, cut, and various Unix tools. Recently, I've been uh, definitely loving myself some gray log. Um, I also like uh, elk, which if you don't know what gray log is, there's a uh, VM that you can download out there that they provide for free. And then elk, I do know that a company called Security Onion has a Docker container of an elk stack that you can use. There's a nice. pepperina. There, yeah, there's a dog. Who has a dog? <laughs> oh. I, I have five dogs. Ah, well, uh. hello, dogs. <laughs> uh, they're joining They're joining us tonight. Um, so when you're working with all like these different tools and these different things, um, one of the things that I've found really difficult is when you can't Google the log format. Um, so how do you specifically deal with undocumented log formats? I cross my fingers and I look through like the text for patterns. Um, like a lot of the times, like I, especially cause I've noticed like XML loves to do the undocumented stuff where like some apps will use XML, which is already really not that like pretty looking. So like I'll try and like I'll run it through some kind of pretty printer. I'll look through and I'll look for specific text strings that seem to have something, and I try and interpret the meaning as if, hey, if I were building this application, how would I want to log my data? And from there, I kind of like just start to build things off from that. That's fair. <laughs> that's yeah. how would how would I want to read my data? Yeah, that's the developers are also human, and although. We don't really know what they're thinking all the time. Sometimes we can try. <laughs> um, what other, like, what what was an NCL challenge where you had to use that kind of um, that kind of process? Did you feel like the PayPal logs? <laughs> oh, well, I loved those. That's, that's exactly I I thinking. loved and hated those in equal measure. I almost threw my laptop across the room because of those things. You're a throw your laptop person. <laughs> I am when it comes to PayPal logs. What specifically oh about the PayPal logs was was difficult I, for people who have, find, maybe hadn't seen it? I could find no documentation whatsoever as to what the PayPal logs were, and like there were a lot of just they were extremely verbose. Um, they looked like JSON, but they weren't JSON. It, it was weird. <laughs> just all sorts of weird. You should have used Excel. <laughs> It yeah. wasn't bad in Excel. Yeah, Kate, why don't you talk a little bit about how you deal with log analysis? Because I'm I'm sure some people have heard about it, but in case they haven't. So I'm basically infamous at this point for refusing to learn to use grep and awk. Um, I am a professional working in the workforce, and when I have to break down a log file, I like to use Excel. Uh, I'm just really good at Excel. I've always been good at Excel. I'm very comfortable managing the data in Excel. I'm comfortable finding my own delimiters or figuring out how I want to parse the data myself. Uh, I'm an Excel wizard. 
So for me, the biggest feature is that text to columns. Um, and when things split that you don't want to split, I know how to like filter the data, move that chunk over, filter it back, push it back where it's supposed to be. I just, I like it. <laughs> I have a blog on it somewhere. I think it's called like log analysis for people who don't want to do uh, command line interfaces. <laughs> I think I, I think I linked it in mine, in my blog about log analysis as well. Although I am I'm hard stuck on command line stuff. But you're really good at it. That's I'm hard not to good at. It. I actually do very much the same thing that um, that John mentioned in his blog in his blog post, which is you take just one big X and you cut it like this is stuff I don't want. This is also stuff I don't want. This is also stuff I don't want. The amount of grep dash Vs that I can get in one line is honestly disgusting. But see, I want all of it. I just want it well organized. And that's that's what I do in Excel. <laughs> that's fair. But yeah. I mean, like, if you ever did want to learn command line, I'm always here. I've offered Your before. Your actually got me the furthest I have ever gotten. Yeah. Success. So, yeah, Webwood's just the one who got me the farthest I have ever gotten with command line. I don't think I used it for log analysis, but I used it for something else. And it was like a work thing. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And I was literally like, have your blog open at work doing a thing. <laughs> to, to be honest, I've, I've opened like blogs at work being like, okay, what am, what am I doing? Oh yeah, that's that's an injection. Oh right, yes. The amount of the amount of times, just for people who are interested, the amount of times you will end up using like blogs and other like you know custom made content from like other cybersecurity professionals while you are doing your job on the regular is more, much more often than you would initially expect it to be. Yeah. Awkward is when you're opening like your own blogs that you wrote to look up exactly how you do the thing. And then people catch you and then they're like. <laughs> yeah, but like just because you can write about it doesn't mean that you can memorize all of it. I mean, the point is not to be a dictionary. The point is to my be able to use my things. Hmm? My blogs are my cheat sheets. And they can be everyone's cheat sheets if they if everyone keeps referencing them, which will be great. That's what we want. We want to teach people things. Um, Tristan, anything else you want to add about your experience with log analysis or like those tools? Or you're catalog. Yeah. Um, it's not NCL related, but uh, I got my start with uh, gray log during Kringle Con, this past Kringle Con, and like I definitely liked myself some gray log. Um, <laughs> If you ever get the chance to use anything that's powered by Elasticsearch, and yeah, you're hearing me say this about something written in Java, you should 100% do it. What's Elasticsearch? I don't actually know about that. Yeah. Um, so, like, Elasticsearch is the thing that powers Greylog and Elk. Um, it's this, it's not a database. It's just, like, this thing that you can, like, query through information that it puts through, that puts into it. And well, the big thing is that it does, um, uh, it enriches logs and it does that based on things that you add in. Um, it's what also do you mean like by that exactly. Um, so the best example I can think of. So if you look at like a Sericata log, which is a popular um, intrusion detection system, like uh, I think you can get Elk along with a. Uh, I think it's called uh, Log Stash. To. Um, to go through and like enrich the data and a way that you can do that is that like, oh, I want IPs to have geolocations associated with them or I want like everything on my like local LAN to like just like say that it's a local LAN instead of throwing a geotag and stuff like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that, okay, that makes sense. I think I can think of a very specific uh, log analysis question from the NCL that that would have been useful for. <laughs> Are you talking about the trace roots one? No, I'm talking about the one where you had to figure out the one anomalous request. Yeah, I think we're talking about the same. We're talking about the same one. Yeah, uh, we're actually possibly reusing that challenge for stuff in the near future. Interesting. Um, so, Tristan, 
which um what was the tool called again gray log um either gray log or elk stash will work or, or no gray log or gray log or an elk stash <laughs> ah okay so uh, where can people find those gray log if you just like google gray log they actually have a vm uh that you can like download for free and then run it up um as for like an elk stash which Elk stands for Elasticsearch Log Stash and Kibana. Um, there's there's probably some pre-built VMs, but the uh, best one I found is Security Onion. Instead of pre-building a VM, well, they also have a pre-built VM, but they actually have Docker containers you can run, which I love myself some containers. Um, I think containers are great. Uh, yeah, so, so you're going to write a blog on that, right? Containers, yes. <laughs> Perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in the queue for things to be written. Because um, that's not ever growing. Because hmm? that log is not ever growing and mountainous. Oh, um, yeah. I added You're going to need to analyze it soon, right? I, I just <laughs> finished the summer content schedule. I haven't even shared it with you guys. So fun fact, I just finished the summer content schedule. Yay! Oh, and you get to just see some uh, cool and interesting stuff from us, some stuff that's not necessarily NCEL related, but it's a little more career related. Um, we really think that bridging the gap between curriculum and career is what NCL does really well. Um, and we want to address some of those other things that we found. And yeah, it's, the, the player ambassadors don't even know what's on this new lineup yet. I literally finished it this afternoon. Love it. I love a surprise. Um, all right. So if there are no closing thoughts on log analysis, or does anyone in the chat, I think there's like 20 of you. Does, does anybody have any specific questions on log analysis that you were hoping to have answered or questions that have come up through uh, things that we have talked about so far. I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to type things or 45, uh, I suppose. While we wait, um, I just want to throw this out there that also another option, uh, I learned log analysis using Python. So if you don't want command line, uh, you don't want Excel, Python. How do you do that? So you take the log file, basically just treat it like a text file, and you do a for loop with each line and split it up. And what I like to do is like you look for whatever, I guess, column you're trying to find or whatever piece of data in that line. And uh, I use a lot of dictionaries and lists to sort everything. Um, so that sounds like another blog coming up, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you fishing for blog content? <laughs> uh, no. So what I love about having this new team is that everyone has so many different approaches to solve like the same challenges. And we have such a diverse team now that we're really capturing like all of those different methodologies for different people who have different skills and different learning styles and different backgrounds. You know, I would never think to do anything that involves me having to write code ever so you know that's not a solution that i would come to so it's 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 cool to have more people doing this now all right i literally just added it to trello <laughs> <laughs> nice happening assigned <laughs> well nice. uh, jacob as if yeah. i don't see any any questions that people have posted? Um, do you want to dive in a little bit about network traffic analysis and what you find sure. the most useful when you are tackling these kinds of problems? Sure. So, uh, just to give everybody a quick refresher, network traffic analysis uh, is usually a PCAP file, which pretty much at least everybody I know uses Wireshark to analyze, and it's just. TCP or UDP traffic on a network. Um, so you can use uh, filters in Wireshark to narrow down that data. It lets you peek into all the different fields of the uh, packets. So your IP addresses, sizes of packets, and there's, there's a lot of information in there. So um, with the network analysis challenges, you're usually like given like what IP address 
extracted the data from the network. So you've got to take this thousand, thousands of packets and find the handful that that uh, data was extracted in. So um, usually how I start these challenges is uh, some, there's a menu in the top of Wireshark called statistics. So you mm -hmm. go to the statistics menu and click around looking at the different endpoints and types of data transferred. Uh, and that usually can give you a good starting point. So a lot of times you can rule out just the mundane traffic. If you don't find it in the uh, odd traffic, you can go back to it. But generally I try to rule out just whatever looks normal. And then you can go from there uh, using filters. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of different things that um, Wireshark can allow like allow you to do with its various tools that it has built in. But like, what do you do when the Wireshark GUI has like run its course and you can't get anything else out of it, but you still need to answer questions? Yes, yeah, so this is a uh, something that I really like to use, and um, it's still from Wireshark. It's called T Sharp and it's Wireshark's command line uh, variant. And that lets you extract a, any field you want in the packets, no matter what field it is, no matter if it's a column or if it's showing up in the GUI, you can extract it in uh, T Sharp. And um, let's see, can I talk about a specific challenge from last season? Um, like the uh, BitTorrent traffic generally. Um, Without uh, giving generally. direct answers. Yeah. yeah. Methodologies only. Like right. don't say yeah. the answer was 37. No, okay, yeah, but um, it was 22. Wireshark doesn't have in the GUI where you can just click extract BitTorrent traffic. <laughs> so to get the data out of the packets, um, I use T Shark to get all the data fields. So T Shark, you can give a Wireshark filter to. You can give it the name of the field or fields that you want to extract, and it'll print it out in the command line. Uh, sometimes you can just pipe that straight into a file in Linux, and then you could get possibly, if it's all in the right order, get the file you wanted out of there instead of. Uh, some people I've heard have done it by hand. Um, yeah, that's that's rough. So you can <laughs> just type it out. That hurts me on a personal level. level. Hmm. I feel like I'm being specifically called out right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I don't do everything works. by hand, answer, most things. <laughs> if you get the answer, just go for it. Uh, but um, for also, if you're really getting into the nitty gritty of uh, network traffic analysis and you've got a bunch of data you've extracted, but it's jumbled, uh, not how you want it, you can even use Python. Uh, so I've had to do that before. So I get the data out of it. It's not in the order I want. I can't just throw it in a file. So um, basically using log analysis techniques, you can reorder the data to the proper order and get your extracted file out. Those are some of my favorite challenges to do. Interesting. Yeah. I, definitely I have a tool that I use for PCAPs when I'm like absolutely stuck in Wireshark. And sometimes, look, I do a lot of stuff by hand, OK? I yeah. am really good at analyzing data and finding what I want. Um, but sometimes when I just need a new perspective on it, I like to use a tool. I just posted the link called Network Miner. It just handles PCAPs in a different way and gives me new perspective. I don't know if it's actually helpful, but new perspective. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. I think I've used it once um, when I was just starting out. Then I was like, eh, I'm going to stick with Wireshark because that's what the people I knew um, were using. But Network Miner has a lot of the same features, but it's got a different layout and stuff. So give it a shot if you're stuck with Wireshark. So we have a question from 
Novidius. I literally almost read it as not a virus. Uh, <laughs> what is the best way for a new person to learn how to use Wireshark or uh, deal with network traffic analysis overall? Okay, so uh, in my opinion, just start capturing the traffic on your home network. So start up Wireshark capturing data. Go to Google, search for something. Uh, go to some social media site. You'll generate a lot of traffic. And you can stop it. You can go look and see, hmm, I did what I just did, created all of these packets. So I know what I did. I clicked on a web page. Well, this must be the web page loading. Um, I did a search. So this packet is the post request for that search. So just uh, that's what I did. I started with my network and my traffic. And then from there, you can start recognizing stuff in other people's data. Um, for me, when I started to do that, um, the biggest thing I found was that there was a lot of noise on my network. Um, so I actually created like a VM and I only captured just what that device was doing it. Cause I have a lot of smart home devices because I like convenience. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, Tristan, do you have any? Yeah. I do. Um, so going off um, uh, Jacob's thing about how he was talking about using Python for log analysis, there's actually a really handy dandy Python uh, library called Scappy that um, it it's lib pcap for Python, but even more because not only can you do like pcap filters and um, uh, well, not pcap filters, it's actually called um, uh, Berkeley packet filters. You can also do, um, you can craft packets from it and just send them off the wire it's a really awesome tool and you can do more than just like analysis with it. You can like implement attacks in it. Um, and it's super useful to learn, especially if you like Python. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is libcap? Cause you said it was libcap for Python. But I don't know what or, libcap is. Oh, lib, lib pcap. Um, so uh, lib pcap was like this, uh, it was the original library for pcap. So uh, it was probably originally written in like C or C++. And that was just like, it's the library for the development files for processing PCAPs. So like, I'm pretty sure if you look into Wireshark's dependencies, it'll depend on libpcap. So think of like libpcap as like doing like all the background processing while Wireshark is like showing a fancy, um, uh, the fancy results. I'm a decade older than you and I know so much less than you and it is painful. <laughs> <laughs> It just means that you're learning. <laughs> I'm learning too. I didn't know that the pcap was the, the back end for Wireshark. I, most of what I ended up doing in Wireshark was stepping into it and going, oh God, what's this? <laughs> so in my very first write-up on how to do network traffic, um, I think it still exists. I hope nobody can find it. Um, basically I said like, Wireshark's my favorite game of just keep clicking. <laughs> that's that's pretty accurate. Yep. I, I didn't know anything, but I was able to just keep clicking until I found like some stuff. I that's probably where I lost the most accuracy. Like between honestly between these two, between log analysis and network traffic analysis as where all of my accuracy always gets lost. I'm like, I don't know, this might be it. This could be the answer. <laughs> but when I finally do find the answer, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense based on how it's formatted. But you don't really have that epiphany moment until you've figured it out. And then you're like, but I can't, but couldn't I have done this 20 minutes earlier? Or maybe like four hours earlier. <laughs> or like seven attempts. <laughs> seven attempts earlier. I think that's a really important point though, um, especially in categories that you're new to, like trying an answer that might be right. Don't be afraid to get it wrong or mess up your accuracy as long as you're learning. Cause as soon as you, you figure out, like like he said, as soon as you figure out, oh yeah, no, that totally makes sense. But you need to confirm that it's correct to have that moment. 
and sometimes like if like if you're not in like a, a dead sprint for like first place um, between like so never me. <laughs> um, honestly, just trying and guessing through some of these challenges isn't a bad way to go. Like if you do stumble upon the answer, then you can kind of reverse engineer and like oh. This is like this. Well, what about this makes this the answer for this part of the question? Like, why does this why does this answer make sense? What it like? What is this request? Um, what does this request have in it that would have identified it as you know X, Y, or Z? And that's a great example. Of how that. I learned how to do network traffic analysis was doing really really bad early on, and then learning from those mistakes, and then building on those, and understanding the tool from there. A really good example of that is like this is this is how, literally like how I started to learn Wireshark. They'll ask you like who is the target IP and who is the malicious IP, and I would pop it into Network Miner, which gave me a list of all the uniques, and I just try all of them until I had a, the the malicious ID or the the um, target I, IP, and then I could filter by that and have a smaller pool to look at. And then usually I was able to build off of that um, before I learned anything else. IPs yeah. were something that I could manage and I understood what those were. So it was, you know, I guessed and I probably wasted like 17 attempts, but it gave me the opportunity to build on it. Mistakes help you in the long run if you learn from them. Yep. You always gotta learn. It's, it's like how, it's like that um, that quote from Mythbusters. It's only science if you write it down. Yes. <laughs> it's only learn. It, it's, it, <laughs> mess ups are only like useful if you learn from them. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like fall down six times, stand up seven. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes you will fall down and you just need to lie down on your face for a moment and be like, uh, okay, <laughs> what happened? The most inspiring keynote speaker I ever saw was Michelle Dennedy. Um, I'll post her Twitter in the link in a second. She laid down on the floor and groaned about how hard life was in the middle of her keynote. And I was like, respect. She's my favorite person in InfoSec because of that. And it was the first moment where I like saw myself in InfoSec. <laughs> like both respect and like, yeah, I feel that. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Same. I'll grab her Twitter for you guys. <laughs> but I, but I think, I think that's, that's just an important part of like a lot of the cybersecurity stuff that we're trying to do is like humanizing it. Cause it seems so scary. <laughs> like even, even, even people who are friends of mine that like, are very kind, very helpful. They know how to do things that I don't think I'd be able to do in a million years. And I sometimes find them very intimidating. But like, I have to understand if I ask questions and like, you know, you know, dawdle around a little bit, like they're humans, they've made mistakes too. And sometimes they've learned things from me, which I find shocking. How do you think so, I feel? <laughs> I literally was known as like the girl who can like do anything. <laughs> Hey fam, now I'm here. Well, yeah, that's because people are, pardon my French, assholes. I mean, they were right. I didn't know. I This is now for children, so I didn't know anything. That's not what I was going to say. Point being. I, what, so. Uh, so, Kristen, you, you started out as like, you know, just sort of interested and you wanted to do NCL. So you like went out and found your own little family, right? Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, so like how I got thrown on a team or? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Works. So um, the state that I live in allows me to do college courses while I'm in high school for free. And I was taking, uh, I think at that point in time, it was Linux plus, I don't remember. It it was some class with the teacher who did, cause this, it's a local community college. It's the one that my high school recommended. 
and they do a cybersecurity degree, and I'm like, okay, this can eventually transfer to a bachelor's, hopefully. Um, so I the the teacher just looked at me and is like, hey, I think you should try this. I'm trying to throw together a team of students, and we did one year, and it was kind of just like luck. I I, I really don't know why he was like, hey, you should do. <laughs> but he you're did. A smart little bean. But I hide in the corner. <laughs> so you're a smart little bean. You hide in the corner, yet somehow you're here. Yeah. It means the, you applied. You applied yourself. I, I was sitting in a study hall, and I'm like, hey, I might as well apply to that. Like, the worst that happens is I don't hear anything, and now I'm here. <laughs> like, I feel that like Forrest good. Gump sometimes, where I just randomly are in situations that, like, are big. <laughs> yeah, same, same. I mean, I am the chief player, like... You know what? You know how all this started? It was literally like Dan wanted to do a Facebook live show and he was like, oh, this girl's screaming into the void. Let's see what happens when we put her on camera. <laughs> screaming into the void? Yeah, I mean, look, the blog existed. There were some pro tips. They were not good, but they existed. Um, and then I like contacted Dan and was like, I want to help people. And I think NCL is good. And here we are. That's, Speaking know. of here we are, I don't know if anybody saw, but on Monday, we dropped some hints to the big thing that we have coming after registration close. And this week's hint was art of me and Xena as your superhero player ambassadors. Um, did, did everyone did see that, right? Everyone is looking at I the, mean, if you're reading your newsletters, you know, I, where there's a flag that you can enter to be in a weekly, or not a weekly drawing, you can enter every week to be in a drawing to win Amazon gift cards, and I think they're $100, $50, and $25, sponsored by your player ambassadors. So, so we're curious about opening your emails because we got good stuff in there. Like good art. Like I'm so, I, I know you all won't be able to see it yet. All, you know, I think 23 of you who are here. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have some wonderful, um, just wonderful stuff coming. Art coming out. There's stuff, there's other stuff, but I'm just there's really excited about the art right now. Um, I think if you yeah. open your emails, that's the only place we're releasing this from now until I think it's like March 23rd, like after late registration closes. So long. Um, we have a we have a quick question from I almost said not a virus again. I'm so sorry. No bias. No novitus. Any tips? for recruiting team members? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, you, you started, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what I did, well, first I'll go with how I was recruited and then I'll tell you how uh, some other ways that I've tried to recruit people um, back in the club that I was in in school. So uh, my school did a um, in-house CTF. Basically, it was built by the cyber club and it was sent out to all the IT students. And there was, uh, thankfully, we had some good partnerships with EC Council. So we were giving away full paid uh, certified ethical hacker certificates for the top two players. Oh, um, wow. So that got a lot of people interested. And a that lot of people good. did that CTF. And you had to show up to the conference on the last day of the CTF to get your prizes if you won anything. So at that conference, I met the professor and the uh, cyber club president and the rest of the club. And I was recruited through that CTF. Um, and then some other things that I've done. Uh, we have something, we had something called Club Rush, which is basically, I don't know if other colleges do it, but one day every semester where all the representatives for school clubs uh, kind of just have a table in a big 
room somewhere and students come by and you can tell them about your club and what you do. We recruited a lot of people that way too. Um, and also just ask around uh, people who are taking uh, IT courses. They're likely interested in the same thing you are, just sitting in class. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Tristan, I believe you had. I kind of threw something in the chat where I'm, I said computer labs. So the first semester was like the that I did NCL was our first run. And by the second one, we had lost a lot of people just because they weren't interested in it because they said they didn't have the time and like they they kind of just kind of like forgot. It happens. <laughs> and and I like so I had to sit in this computer lab for like three hours till my next class because if I would drive home, like I wouldn't have enough time to get back in time for my next course. Like I would eat lunch and like sit in this computer lab and do homework and like just kind of like talk to some people there. And like, I noticed um, like there were a couple of people I met and like they were, they had kind of mentioned security at some point and like how, and I'm like, hey, you should do the CTF. And I was essentially like, like kind of like, I wasn't handing out flyers, but I'm like, <laughs> always, I almost imagine like- Political the paper canvassing? Yes. <laughs> Like, hey, it, it started out with Flare On, and then it moved on to NCL. So I'm like, hey, come to Flare On, reverse engineer this .NET application with me, you'll have fun, like, I'll walk you through it. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, hey. I was like, oh, you have Flare? <laughs> um, now, Flare On's the uh, CTF run by uh, FireEye. Um, it was really fun. But I've done it, yeah. I just forgot. I think I think what based on my experiences and the experiences that you guys have talked about, pretty much the way you get people into cybersecurity is you just like you you sh you shuffle up to somebody and you go, hey, hey, you're interested in breaking things. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, you just want the best. My favorite technique is when people are required to try. <laughs> it was terrible, but like, look. I was forced into it. Gina was forced into it. We've seen a lot of success by force. <laughs> Not that I think people should be forced. You should want to do it. Um, but I think it's really hard for people to take the initial jump. So, you know, forcing them takes away that like fear of falling. You have to do it anyway. And I think competitions like NCL, I, I really do think NCL is the best for CTF. And that's why, you know, I'm here. <laughs> uh, and because it's so accessible to the beginner, it's so accessible to the first time CTFers. So like, you know, I coach, so you don't feel like, oh no, it's too intimidating. Like I can teach you crypto in like two hours and you're gonna get every challenge in NCL. I got a method. Um, so I introduce people there first because it's something I'm passionate about. I'm sure Jacob could teach people Python scripting and Tristan, you could just teach them everything. So, hey. Um, but yeah, it, you just find like your thing that you're really passionate for and you, you share your passion with somebody. And uh, I think excitement is contagious. So just get people in a room, give them some sample challenges. We can all encrypt some stuff in binary or hexadecimal or base 64 or whatever it takes to, to build some challenges. You can absolutely build crypto challenges. Don't tell me you can't. I have a whole blog on how to decrypt it. Just switch it to encrypt. <laughs> And then get people into it. I I remember when we had this, you know, booths at college to like recruit people for different clubs, and we had put together a couple of stuff that some some of it was like crypto crypto kind of challenges to get people like, oh, here's like here's one challenge. If you finish this, come back to us and like let us know like and you can talk a little bit more. And then we give them the second challenge. And then the third challenge, I don't have them anymore and I wish I did. But I wanted to be super dumb and I put them in a little manila envelopes and I put a uh, stamp that's a top secret on it. <laughs> and I handed that to them if they got the if they got the second one. Just <laughs> like, look, we have shiny things. Oh it's <laughs> There was a, there was, you know, the XKCD comic nerd sniping? 
where it's like, ask specific questions of nerds, and they'll stop for long enough and be like, wait, hold on, how do I solve that? That was what I was trying to do. I was trying to find those people. <laughs> so. I hope that answered the question. I feel like we did a really long answer to that one. But I think bringing people into the games and, and building your teams uh, is important. Yeah. And it's fun. It's you make fun. new friends. Yeah. You get apartments in new states with that friend. <laughs> <laughs> you you hang out at conferences till 4 a.m.? 3 in the morning? <laughs> My day, my next day was awful. I was like, the dying. same. I had to present an award and then I got an award and I was so tired. I just started sobbing. I do remember that. Um, that was sleep deprivation more than true humbleness. <laughs> Don't say that. I mean, I didn't expect it and I was very humbled by it, but like, yeah, I just started sobbing because I was really tired. That's fair. Um, are there any other questions from the peanut gallery? I have not seen our favorite them peanut gallery. Our favorite peanut gallery. Honestly, the peanut gallery is why we do this every week. Yeah, I, I like talking to it. Well, it's from the pajama party. I mean, last year at the pajama party, I had to put up a sign on the door that said warning, escape pupper inside, because everybody kept opening the door and not looking down, and Zena just kept bolting into other sessions and, like, causing pandemonium. <laughs> this year, I don't think we have a door, so she's going to get tied to a table. Wait, we told her to Oh, no. <laughs> Um, we're at this year at Weeks, we're actually gonna be out in like uh, a big like lounge lobby area. So I don't think there's like physical doors to barricade us in so that we can continue to grow and sprawl because last year we sprawled out into the hallway and they weren't happy about that. So this year they just put us in the hallway. Nice. It's a nice hallway. <laughs> it's it's a nice hallway. I mean, no, it's a really big like hallway. It's like it's like a lobby esque area. So we can set up and, and have as much space as we need. So it's cool. It's yeah. a good thing, I promise. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be great. I'm very excited. Speaking of which, um, that's Zina it. has a onesie, so I'm going to go, like, get the onesie. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the conference is in, like, what, three weeks? Oh, yeah. my God. It's in, like, three weeks. Oh, my God. I'm just thinking about that. It's, 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 I'm so excited, but I'm also stressing because I'm like, oh no, I have to be smart and represent people now instead of being like a doofus at a conference. Because I was the first conference, I was just running around having a grand old time. Uh, and by running around, I mean, actually, I spent most of my time in the NCO training facilities because I was like, I'm not leaving here. I'm too competitive for this. <laughs> I need to finish the challenges I said I would write. I, okay. You are also in school, so prioritize school <laughs> and then do the challenges. No, nah, it's good. I got this. Don't get Let me get you get kicked out of school. You prioritize <laughs> school, then do the, well, prioritize school, then do your homework, have a life, and then do your challenges. Uh, you know what? Your life can wait until after your challenges. Hold on. <laughs> We're in crunch time. Okay. Your life can wait till after we this. Prioritize <laughs> school. Do your homework. Drink like, some water. Do your challenges. It's yeah, like like water. It's like the um uh, in cartoons, specifically Emperor's New Groove, where Kronk has like the angel Kronk and devil Kronk on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> angel Kronk, uh, am I? I'm yeah, am I the angel or the devil though? But, You're an angel, okay. Kronk, and I'm, you know me. Because <laughs> Kate's over here, like you don't need your life. You got. <laughs> All right, I see Pupper onesie. It's so much. Do we have Pupper onesie? We have Pupper onesie. <gasps> I'm still buttoning it, but it has little rainbow-colored unicorns. Oh, wow. I can't find a unicorn to get it on camera. It's very cute. 
he not happy right now because this one doesn't fit and we we had to get it's literally held like it's fitted with a binder clip on the back of her neck <laughs> but it makes for good photos he's so cute i'm getting very distracted by the dog i mean that's my whole life that's that's fair all right well it seems to be winding down at this point we're talking about dogs which which is which is the, the point in the stream where we ask if anyone else has any final questions um or give updates on things um there's a i can say that there's a specific project that i'm working on that i think i just got some of the final submissions for so you'll be able to I mean, you can drop it whenever you're ready it's your oh. baby if you want to drop oh, the news yeah. here and now you want to set a date here and now? You do you. Okay, I definitely don't have a date for when this is dropping. Does anyone want? To, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the chat. Does anyone want to hear about? Uh, make a poll. But I'm just gonna look at the chat and see if anyone responds. If anyone wants to hear about the thing that I'm working on, put it in the chat. <laughs> Tristan, you don't count. Tristan, you don't count. You're right here. You submitted a thing to me. <laughs> I have to double check everyone, but like, <coughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I, okay, DK says he wants to hear, any, anyone else? Because I can't, I, I can, I, cause I can't. I mean, we can always hold the news till later. If you're not excited and, and you don't feel oh, no, like I'm, there's I'm enough, <laughs> if okay, you don't feel like there's enough need. No, that no, I no, no. They said there's a lot. There's a couple more people talking about it. But anyway, um, I guess I could I could put it as a poll. But like, who just just like it's a broad question. Who listens to music while they do like the NCL stuff, and who always has like a playlist that they're always listening to that like gets them pumped up to like compete? I didn't make one for Cena. Oh, you make one for Um. So I just, I really bothered everyone in the channel or all the ambassadors. And I was like, Hey guys, Hey guys, what do you guys listen to when you do the NCL? What, what, what do you, what do you guys listen to? So what we're doing, if anyone's interested is we're putting together playlists for each of the ambassadors. Um, it's all of, all of the music that they listen to while they are competing in the NCL that get them pumped up or that get that get them just like in the zone. Um, and we're gonna, if I can get everything together, I wanna drop it um, before, so, this isn't gonna happen. But if, if everything went perfectly, I would like to drop it before this next season starts. Um, I'll have to double check and see how much I have but we're trying to get playlists put together for all the ambassadors so that people can see which ambassadors music style they vibe with the most um i may need to go go back and remake mine because the uh birds of prey album dropped and i it's amazing i don't know if, if anyone else has did you see the movie yes oh my god i love it i'm seeing it multiple times in theaters because i have multiple friends who want to go but like <laughs> that dropped and it's amazing uh so mine it sounds like i'm like an emo sad kid but i just like things in minor keys <laughs> um yeah yeah i i also uh mine had a lot of actually mine mine had a, has a, now some i remember somebody in the chat saying this like talking to me like oh that's a league of legends reference i have a lot of league of legends music in mind i actually got really vibe checked by spotify at the like the end of the year wrap up they're like oh what did you listen to the most and my number one played artist was league of legends and i've never felt more called out in my life tristan did you make yours i did and uh john had a reaction to mine and i'm going to quote it from the slack word for word it was damn dude you rock with an exclamation point <laughs> Because my entire playlist is pretty much Pearl Jam and Nirvana. Oh, you're so cute. We're gonna keep you. <laughs> Jacob, what about you? <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, so I got one. It's it's pretty much everything from like the eighties backwards. Uh pretty much what I listen to. With a few um well, a few doo-wop like fifty songs in there. 
We're going to um, have a really fun together. together. <laughs> because, what? like, I started a show tunes Disney medley mashup, and it's all, like, girl power ballads, um, and I love them. It's everything that I sing really loud in the office all the time. Nice. All right, so that is all that, is all that I had. If anyone else wants to add some stuff, uh, feel yeah. free. But I think we're coming to time. And as of, wait, hold on, is there one more question? I mean, we had puppy onesies. We had puppy onesies. Any more questions that I see? Oh, no, there is, a, there is a question in here that I didn't see. Oh my gosh, I'm very sorry, Rod. Very, I apologize. Is there a category specifically on Linux in the NCL? No. I can feel that, so I have news. <laughs> Secret news. Make sure NCL doesn't know I said this out loud. Um, I do know that the uh, Cyber Skyline boys are building some Linux command terminals into different categories right now. Um, in the future, that may turn into its own challenge category. At this time, it's just kind of sprinkled in. Um, but there's some experimentation going on. So make sure that when you see challenges that are new or different or, you know, it, when you rate those challenges, it helps us determine what you like and what you don't like. Um, success failure um, of the challenge, like whether people can solve it or not, isn't necessarily the best metric of whether it's a good challenge. So when you guys give us those ratings, that really helps us to determine what's a really good challenge. Right now, I'm really in love with the stuff they're doing in the command line terminals um, because I'm still trying to learn that ish. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know if it's going to be its own category anytime soon, but I know like potentially it could turn into it. Nice. Secret info. See, that's I what happens when you come to these shows. I'm not allowed to be on the show. Get secret info. Yeah, maybe I should always, maybe maybe they should they should screen what you're about to tell everyone. I feel like uh, they need to just get like some big button that like automatically censors whatever screen I'm on and mutes my audio. <laughs> Like that? <laughs> Somebody's gonna be able to like watch the playback and read her lips. Probably. <laughs> anyway. All the time. Did you really? <laughs> yes. They, they absolutely do watch the shows because I get questions about why they said things. I'm a woman of the people. Woo! All right. Well, <laughs> we've reached well, that point. We have reached that point. And I think before we get any more secret info, actually, one moment. Before we get any more secret info, I think that's a good time to shut her down. So thank you all for being here. Um, we will see you here same time next week. Uh, I do not know who is I, who is hosting or what the, the thing is on. Um, it's actually on password cracking with Hashcat and wireless exploit access exploitation. So you guys will be able to learn about that. It'll be grand. Uh, you have been unmuted. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be Aaron and Tina and Meredith as best I can tell, according to our schedule board. Although tonight was supposed to be P, Jacob and John. And you see how that went. <laughs> so. It, it always gets shuffled around, but uh, we will see you next time. Au revoir. Good night, y'all. <laughs>